Hey booktube, welcome back to my channel, I am the Book Mage, and I thought I would bring you along on another chill little casual um, like weekly reading vlog. Haven't done one in a while and I have quite a few like fun things planned like this week, and I have literally just finished another book um, and also another vlog, and so I kind of figure like while I'm here I may as well just immediately start filming and reading the next one. So I'm actually about to just jump up and grab my next book, and my next read is one that I'm picking up for my Goth Girl book club, which is a book club that I have with just like two of my friends in person, and I actually got to pick the book this month. Um, I've never picked before. I wasn't sure what to go with, whether I should like try and like cater to the taste of the other girls, or whether I should just be like, my reading something I want to read and you can deal with it. <laughs> so I kind of did the latter and I decided to go with something that was a new release, so let me just jump up and let's go grab it. Okay, so unfortunately it is in the stack somewhere. I'm pretty sure it is this one, so let me see if I can get that out. <laughs> um, it is The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett, and I don't think my haul video has come out yet. I'm... maybe it has? I don't know. Um, but this is the lovely Broken Binding edition. I'm oh, gonna feel so bad because I feel like if I touch this, like, my hand is gonna rub off the foil. And, like, the foil has mushrooms, that's so cute. Um, so this is the book that I'm going to be reading. I'm gonna have no spoilers in this because this is a, like, high fantasy murder mystery, and it's meant to be based on, um, like, really inspired by, like, Sherlock Holmes style mysteries, so, like, I don't want to spoil the mystery or, like, the clues or anything. Um, I feel like that's meant to be part of the fun of reading it. So I will not have spoilers. Um, I will probably like give like my opinions and things um, but I, I definitely don't want to ruin this book for anyone else that might want to read it because I'm excited for this book and like I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> what I understand about this one is that there's some sort of like remote manor house or something and I think some sort of like high ranking official or officer or something like that is killed when a tree sort of like spontaneously like bursts out of their body, just like grows out of them randomly. Like no one knows like what this is or how it's happened and so I think these two investigators are like called in to see if they can like solve the mystery of like I guess like what happened, who killed this person, why, how, like it's it's very, it's like a weird murder mystery, like a, a Sherlock Holmes style murder mystery but with high fantasy and magic and grim ducky stuff and apparently like mushroom imagery which I, I hope I'm going to love. So that is the book that I'm going to be reading. As what I'm doing this week, like I have a really really busy week ahead of me, I have a gig tomorrow. I'm going to see Judas Priest, Saxon and Uriah Heep, which like, <laughs> what a throwback to like days before I was born, but I love Judas Priest. Saturday is the goth market, it's back in town and like last time I got, I got the nicest candles, I still have them. <laughs> um, and I, I really really want to get some more of those amazing candles that come in like the little silver. Like they look like this, it comes in like this like stuff, like they're all different, they're all fairly unique and they smell so good and like I really want some more of these and they also had like these cute like witchy gothy spooky horror looking like little baked goods and I really want to get some more of those because they were so good um and I just want to get like some cool goth trinkets and things I should not be spending money because I'm trying to like save up for like a house and a mortgage but at this point it feels like I am just one person and like getting a mortgage on your own is essentially impossible in this day and age to the point where it's like no matter how much I scrimp and save, I'm screwed either way, and I just feel so defeated that I'm like, I may as well fucking spend my money, so spend it I shall. That's what I'm doing Saturday, and then I think I have a break then, but then I'm at another gig in Manchester the following Saturday, so like, I'm busy as all heck. Um, <laughs> I don't anticipate this vlog will run that long, but I think I'm pretty sure like I'll at least get to take you along to like a gig and a little goth market with me, so if that seems like your thing as I read through this, and like depending on how long it takes me to get through this, if I'm quick, I might end up picking up something else. I've been wanting to move on to the sequel to Every Sky a Grave because like I kind of want to get that. It's only the duology and I've read the first book and I read it recently and I'm like I'd like to finish that like while it's still fresh in my head. But this is the last book that I'm like obligated to read this month, mainly because I picked it for a fucking book club so like of course I have to read it. But after that, the possibilities are endless. But that said, I'm gonna I'm gonna start reading this. I'm really excited to read the first chapter. I have like eight minutes left of my lunch break, so like we'll see if I can do this. Oh, and yeah, at some point, like I'm trying to like cut off the top of my head, but yeah, at some point I do have to finish bleaching and dyeing my hair. Maybe I'll see how I feel like after my my first impressions. A as though this is like a try a chapter challenge. I think that's the first time I've ever said that right. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Things are looking good. Um, seven minutes. Let me go read this. <laughs>
okay, not to jump scare you with my eyebrows or anything. Um, it turns out the first chapter is like 25, 26 pages, so I did not read the whole thing in seven minutes before I had to like come off of my break. I had a gap between some other things so I've taken like a second cheeky break to first of all put some dye in my eyebrows because you didn't really see them before but they were horrifically blonde like I, I just had to do something about it so <laughs> hopefully this dye takes and I like regain my ability to emote but um I'm trying like not to touch the book because like I, f I feel like I've still got dye on my fingers. I read the first chapter and so far it's good so far I'm enjoying it um I have just read like 600 plus pages of what I would call mediocre vampires so like finally some good fucking food um mushrooms please don't fail me now it's very good so far it is i really like when fantasy worlds just kind of trust you to i don't know have a brain on your shoulders and they'll just like drop you into it a lot of the world building is done through like context clues and it's just it feels very unique it feels very like it's kind of giving me vibes maybe like a bit like morrowind but if everything was kind of like wet and damp and like maybe dreary like really humid like that's the kind of like environmental vibe i'm getting so far and in terms of the mystery aspect i'm really enjoying getting like lots of detail on like the crime scene it's been like a long time since i've read like a proper like murder mystery i think the last one might have actually just been the justice of kings which we all know how that went um so i'm hoping this one might be as good um this one obviously is leaning much more into like classic murder mystery so like you've got like the housekeeper and like the the groundskeeper the guards like the cook and like the the house servants and things it's all very like it's very classic um somebody gets murdered in like a big opulent estate sort of thing it's interesting so far and I'm trying to like pick up as many clues about like the person and like how their things were left and like how people are reacting and behaving and I don't know it's one of those where like in my head I would like to be able to solve it <laughs> but so far I'm enjoying the ride I'm, I'm not even 30 pages in yet but I like the writing style it is in first person which is like never my favorite yeah I'm liking the world build Shh. okay that's my reminder to go back to work but like <laughs> I like the world building I like the character so far really enjoying the setting um, invested in that I've just realized I forgot to turn my fan off so sorry if you can hear that <laughs> I'm going now anyway so so far so good I'm enjoying it so far I'm hoping like it's like 400 pages but I feel I fingers crossed I feel like this might be like quite a quick read just because of like the nature of the book but I'm invested I am pretty excited to read more and I'll check back in with you guys hopefully when I'm not like covered in dye but honestly <laughs> I can't promise anything <laughs> okay well now I just look scary but at least I have bleached my hair. It looks like I've dyed it because it's just ginger fading into ginger, but this is pre-dye. Um, if you're wondering why I chose ginger as my forever colour after like being every colour under the sun, this is why. <laughs> it makes the process so much easier when your hair just goes orange. Does it feel awful and gross? Uh, yes, it, it feels as bad as it looks. <laughs> What's not bad though, um, I'm now like three chapters in. Um, I think I'm on page 46. So far it's good. I like the POV character. I'm not sure on the detective yet. She seems very like kooky and quirky. I can definitely see the Sherlock Holmes um, inspiration. Like she's she's immediately after psychedelics. <laughs> I won't spoil anything about this but like the world building and the fact that people in this world are like augmented humans but in a fantasy way more than like a sci-fi cyberpunk kind of way. Um, it's it's kind of like fantasy cyberpunk but like mushroomy and naturalist and it's very cool um so far i'm really liking the world building i'm tentatively pretty hopeful about this one i do really love the mushroomy vibes though like mushrooms are my thing and because i'm reading this and because like I i'm doing all this and it means like i do not have time to like cook any meal today at all i have broken into my little stash of japanese snacks and these are like the perfect snack to eat while reading this book. They look like little mushrooms, it's so cute. I, I know it's meant to be like this weird boy's stupid like, like ball cut haircut. Um, to me these have always been mushrooms. They're also really good. That and Ginvis crackers. These don't have anything to do with the book, um, they just taste great. <laughs> and they teach you like all the animal names on the back in different languages, which is cute. Some leave a lot to the imagination though, like this is a peafowl. Tastes good so I cannot complain. Sadly, do not think that mushrooms are included, um, but I'm gonna eat my cute little snacks afterwards because I can't read and eat. Then I think I'm just gonna spend like my whole night chilling and reading this. The other thing I do want to say is while I was bleaching my hair, um, I would normally listen to like a podcast or something, but 
I'm, I'm kind of like burnt out of listening to something like the Morbid podcast. However, since last month I really enjoyed listening to some non-fiction audiobooks. I've started a new audiobook and it's called Dark Archives and it's a non-fiction about books that have been bound in human skin. I thought that was a fascinating subject and so far it's been really good. So I've only read like the first, or I've listened to like the first three chapters while I was bleaching my hair. Um, I will continue to listen to it while I dye my hair. And so I, I don't normally like read two things at once but I feel like because this sounds like a podcast almost, like it sounds like a, it's not a fiction audiobook, so like it just, it feels different. <laughs> My brain will tolerate it. I guess technically I'm reading two books in this vlog so far. Um, so yeah, I will let you know how that one goes when I've got like some more to say on it, but like if you're interested in books bound in human skin, fascinating. So I think I'm having a good evening. <laughs> So I've just gotten back in from the goth market in Leeds, which is why I'm a bit I'm dressed up but I feel like run down <laughs> and excuse the dreaded sunlight. Like I was not prepared to sit and film and I'm like <laughs> I'm like trying to block it out. <laughs> if I can just kind of kind of do this. Maybe that's a little better. I, th I think the lighting's just off. So I haven't checked in for a bit. <laughs> I saw Judas Priest the other night. Well I saw Uriah Heep and Saxon and Judas Priest. And had a great time and obviously didn't really get back in until like like midnight. And then went to see Dune Part 2 for the second time. <laughs> So then got home at like midnight again. So I didn't read for like two or three days, which was very stressful because this book is actually really good so far. Like I feel like whenever I read this, I feel like I'm reading for like a really short space of time and like I don't notice how like fast time is going when I'm reading this. And also I feel like whenever I do read, like I, I seem to only read for a teeny tiny bit at a time, um, but I just fly through it. I'm currently now 120 pages in. I'm also not any further in my audiobook about like books made of human skin um, which is it's, it's still really fascinating but like I haven't had time to just sit down and do anything else where I can just like listen to something so I've had a busy week and this morning I've been out to the um, goth market in Leeds alternative market and like I brought home some little goodies with me and so like I kind of just want to share like like this is the little banner for the alternative market yeah they've got the next one's in July so like I will be there but I got a few fun little things I, I didn't get I have these from last time last time I went I got these like amazing candles um, they're in like pewter and silver and like little antique knickknacks and goblets and things and they smell amazing but the, the person that sells them had to like pull out last minute so sadly I don't really have any trinkets but I do have some baked goods and like many many business cards so I'm doing a small impromptu haul because why not so I got this really cute little pin and it says Leeds goth on it it's such a basic design it's such a basic pin but like I am a goth and I am from Leeds so like I need a pin that says Leeds goth because like it is me 
oh my god this i've been thinking about this cookie since the last market this is like the most delicious cookie it's by this baker called screaming penguin bakery <laughs> but like they're so good and like it, it is like a little heart but it's also like a little like bloody pumpkin face and it's got like cherry jam inside and it's it's so good so i'm gonna eat that later and i wasn't gonna get another one but i had to get this one just because like first of all it's a brownie cookie so like i, I love chocolate brownies but it's called clever girl because it's got little fake raptor eggs on it i can be swayed to buy something because of a cute name and the fact that it is a chocolate brownie and they gave me a little free badge so um this is the company that makes them and then i have some very fun things in here oh i did get one one other non-edible thing um i did get this blue mushroom bookmark this is like so close to my favorite color like i love this and it's mushrooms and like we all know by now how i feel about mushrooms so like the last thing that i bought while we were there i wanted to get every single thing that this shop sold um because they looked so cool the shop is called seven crows and basically they just make stuff out of chocolate but it looks really cool i got these little chocolate rune stones these are like these are so cute i feel like i need to put those in some sort of like instagram post before i eat them because they're so pretty the other thing that i got um, it's a set of like white chocolate dice like d4 d20 d6 it's it's so cool like they look so good they look like um they look like bone but like worn weathered grimy sort of bone um and i can't wait to eat them very excited about these um my i went with my cousin um and she got a chocolate planchette and we were absolute we were stood in the aisle paying absolutely dying with laughter at the thought of imagine you did like a, a ouija board and halfway through contacting the ghost you just ate the planchette <laughs> like what course of action does the ghost have in that situation <laughs> does that banish them do you get more haunted like i don't even believe in ghosts but like the thought of that the thought of that kept us laughing like for so long like all day so that was my little modest haul and yeah we were only there for like two hours we got there in the morning and it doesn't close to like four but which means i do have the rest of the day to just like sit and chill and read because i have like no other plans until this evening when i think i'm getting a chinese but otherwise i have like no plans so i'm pretty much just gonna read and i'm currently like 120 pages in because of being so busy i haven't managed to read so much but what i have been reading i've been really really enjoying i'm, I'm not a massive fan of like the detective character anna but i'm so certain that she's meant to be um, kind of hard to like. I do really really love like the setting and stuff of this. It feels like Morrowind if... <laughs> I don't know like how much to say that isn't technically spoilers because some of it is stated in the synopsis but then like it's like if Pacific Rim was happening to Morrowind but none of that was important and we're just paying attention to like this this murder. What I will say is I've gotten to the part where we've read like the first kind of twist in the murder case and it's such uh, like i really really like how the twist was done i really like how that's like opened up the mystery and like led to more questions it's a twist that i'm enjoying <laughs> is what i'll say i know i obviously haven't gotten to the end of it yet but like so far it's really really intriguing and i like the characters and like i don't i don't know if this is going to be like a complete standalone or if th this might be like um episodic like because it's like a, a detective and a mystery it's entirely possible that if all the characters survive at the end of this that they could appear in like future mysteries like i don't know i feel like that would be like a really fun thing but i also really like the idea of this just being like a self-contained like standalone the other thing is i don't know if this is just me <laughs> there's, there's two characters and i won't see which two there are two characters in it at this point that the way that they met and interacted in my head do you know sometimes you get the vibe of like two characters that you feel like there absolutely could be a romance there. It could be that they never interact again on the page. I could be totally misreading this. But all I'm saying is like when I was reading, there have been plenty of other books and sometimes I just pick up on when two characters have like a meet cute. And I feel like this was a not cute meet cute. I'm paying attention to that as well. Um, so yeah, my battery's flashing at me so I am gonna have to go, but it's probably for the best. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna chill sit back read this at some point eat some baked goods maybe roll a d20 to see if i can actually eat a piece of chocolate um and i'm just gonna have a chill a chill gothy reading weekend which sounds pretty good hello okay so um turns out yesterday i did not get as much reading done as i wanted to mainly because i completely passed out and slept for like so long i think the issue with um being so busy is that i get so tired and so sleepy <laughs> i think i only read about like a hundred maybe like a hundred and something pages and then ate some food and then i guess 
very shortly after that fell asleep. So like I did do some reading but not as much as I'd wanted to. So I came in today with the knowledge that I just wanted to get through as much of this as possible like while still enjoying it like I don't want to like, like I can speed read it but then I would not enjoy it which kind of defeats the purpose of reading at least for me. Mainly because I have to be in the office like physically every single day next week and I know that that's going to destroy me and then Saturday I'm gonna go see Dragon Force in Manchester which is also going to be exhausting. Um, so I know that between now and next Sunday when I'll probably be exhausted and dead I'm not gonna have any downtime, I'm not gonna have like any time when I can just like sit and read and enjoy a book. Uh, I guess I did most of the reading today that I wanted to do yesterday so I'm now about like maybe like less than 100 pages from the end so I kind of just wanted to power through this last bit. I will say it's so good so far like being able to put the clues together and there are a lot of things that you can see like I, I don't read a lot of mystery detective stuff I guess but you can see the clues happening and sort of I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not like the end of the bone witch where all the clues were things that the reader was never told or like could never know about don't get me started on the bone witch so like sometimes you'll notice something and the character like you're seeing this all through the inspector's like assistant's perspective so sometimes you the reader can pick up on something that later when he's like giving his report and getting feedback and you're getting the like the investigator like the detective putting all the clues together and sort of explaining what they mean you can see it before he sees it and then I guess if you don't if you don't catch up on something you get like these little sessions every time where the detective is like going through everything and like putting everything together and the mystery is getting like so much bigger now and there's so many like dead ends and moving parts so I'm really really enjoying this one I, I do really love like the world and the world building of this one and what I will say is that like potential romance that I picked up on I think I'm so like I'm only this far in but like there was one other scene that <laughs> in my head I'm like this is a date <laughs> this is a date um, I'm still waiting to see if anything comes of that <laughs> No one's investigating this aspect of the story, but I am. <laughs> really enjoying it so far. I'm hovering around like at least a four stars. It's written really well. I like the different characters. The mystery is really interesting and engaging. The writing's good. The pacing's really good. It's quite fast paced. Um, I feel like for a mystery, like you're not sort of hovering around in limbo at any point like there are developments constantly every chapter is really easy to read and fly through this I don't know how the other girls are doing I don't know if they've started it yet but I hope they're not hating it because I'm really enjoying this <laughs> so sorry to the girls of book club if you don't like this but like I get to pick. What else am I going to pick? Of course I'm going to pick the mushrooms. I am also dying to try some of the chocolate that I bought yesterday. Um, I was like a little pick me up. Like they just look, I can't even explain it, like they just, they, they're so thick as well. They just look like bone carved rune stones. And they're just really cute. I just really like them. I realised like I wish I had had these when I was in like my Norse fantasy kick. I would have been in my absolute element but like we've got the thorn rune which I think is also Thurisass, like the band Thurisass. That's how I remember that one. I think this one is strength but I think this one is like luck or fate or something like that which I feel like is the closest I can like thematically get to like a murder mystery if I can tie that into like I don't know coincidences and like cause and effect and that kind of thing so I'm gonna eat the rune um for luck and wish me luck reading the rest of this book <laughs> I would really like to get through the rest of it tonight I don't feel like I'm gonna get a five stars out of it but I feel like it's at least a four with luck <laughs> Maybe it's a 4.5. Like, maybe the end is just... Because there are Leviathans. Like, maybe it gets, like, weird and Lovecraftian and, like, who knows what. It could get very me. Okay, it's pretty good white chocolate. I have been lucky. I'm going to get back to my reading. Um, I'm definitely going to finish it. And then I will check back in with my final thoughts.
I have finished it. I feel like I powered through like most of this book today. This was really good. And I think I am discovering that in fact I think I really do like high fantasy traditional mystery stuff. Like I, I know like most fantasy stuff has, most stories in fact have like a mystery element but I mean I don't just mean like an unanswered question or something that the characters are trying to find out on like a, like in like a less specific way. I mean like I like that this is very much trying to solve a specific case or crime. I think I liked it as well when it's been done in stuff like, um, like I really enjoy the Empire of the Wolf series and the first book was very murder mystery but the second book is also very much basically characters doing like investigative work and I feel like I really enjoy that. I just don't, I'm just not the biggest fan of like Sherlock Holmes specifically. At least when it's in fantasy, I definitely think I like it. And now I'm thinking I absolutely 100% need more recommendations, specifically for books like this. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, exactly like this. But anything that's sort of, like, between this and The Justice of Kings, anything that's, like, high fantasy, but crime investigation. <laughs> or I suppose even if the characters themselves are not official investigators or police or anything like that but like like my favorite anime is psychopaths so like i really i think i'm onto something here okay um i think i'm hovering around maybe like in my head i thought it was maybe between like a four and a 4.5 i think i'm gonna see i did really enjoy it it was really quick it was really satisfying it was really engaging like it was really especially towards the end it was just kind of like like blitzing through the story i just it was really really good um but i think that in order to get a five from me like a five star book will sit in my soul so like it's very hard to get a five star rating out of me um i probably rated less than 10 books five stars in my whole life so like that's just it just is how it is um and i feel like a 4.5 my the only reason i'm not really rating this higher and again it was a fantastic book I, I feel like quality wise this book is great and i would love more like it i just feel like i'm personally not as invested in like like i don't have like a big emotional attachment to the characters i didn't feel emotional reading this i felt very smug and vindicated reading much of this because so many of the things that i predicted came true i was onto people i was onto things um i don't know i just i, I feel very vindicated when i pick up on something tiny like a tiny detail in a story and then it comes back as part of a reveal because i feel like i'm like that with so many books and it just it's not given the attention it needs sometimes okay <laughs> and i feel like do you know what i wish i would have done i wish i wish so much i would have recorded this as like a separate video of being like can i figure out the mystery before it's revealed and i can't like say which bits but yeah i, I feel like i was about at, at least like 75 percent accurate i'm sure there are i'm trying to think is there anything that i got blatantly wrong but i don't think there was i feel like another thing that i really did like about this book was it doesn't leave it too long between dropping the breadcrumb for the reader and i guess for the characters as well and actually getting to the reveal so like the mystery is constantly being revealed like bit by bit like clearing the fog of war on a map it doesn't do that like i hate when books and they're not like specifically like fantasy mystery books they're just books in general i hate when there's either a really obvious red herring or a really obvious breadcrumb and it's dropped then you have to read like three or four hundred pages before you get to the reveal before the characters figure that out uh, or before the author expects you to pay attention to that and it's like well actually i'm so sorry but i've known since like page two what book what book was that what book was it no there's been a book really re i'm not re-watching my own wrap-ups but there's definitely been a book recently it says this thing on like page two and it's the twist at the end of oh three dark crowns yeah fuck that book <laughs> in like one of the very first like the, the first page that you're introduced to this one character i was like in that vlog i was like i know this is the twist don't even at me about it i know this is the twist and then that twist is revealed on like the very last page of the book it's like right in the last paragraph and it's like absolutely not you can't do that to me a reveal like that in the first chapter and then think that your readers are stupid enough to not pick up on it throughout the entire book absolutely not this book doesn't do that it's anytime it gives something to you there's only a maximum of like a couple of chapters if not sometimes the same chapter before you actually get like the explanation the reveal the connection whatever it is that like brings that into the mystery and like slots it into place i didn't feel like we were like waiting around for anything which was really really good um the the only reason i'm not really rating this like a 4.5 or higher is just i don't have the emotional 
it, it doesn't have like an emotional impact on me like I really really enjoy it but I'm not emotionally connected to or invested in it in that way which I feel like I do need to be for a five stars like I need to feel I need to feel like my life depends on like the success and survival of like my favorite characters sometimes like I really like this and I would love more stuff like this it's just not it's not gonna hit me in the same way that like a five stars is and it, yes it's because I'm too picky so like I feel like for some of you this would absolutely be a five stars <laughs> because you don't have my ridiculous ridiculous requirements like unnecessarily harsh requirements to get a five star so if any of you guys know any like it could be any type of mystery but specifically like a high fantasy, adult high fantasy, please do not, please do not suggest YA to me. No teenage books, please. None. Adult only. And not a, a YA author's adult debut. I've had it. I've had it with them. But yeah, um, if you know any books like this, like The Justice of Kings, I don't care how old they are, I don't care what decade they're from, like they don't have to be new. Um, I have not read many, so I have probably not read it. <laughs> absolutely recommend it to me. Um, I did check in with the girls from book club. Um, one girl is 100 pages in and enjoying it. Another girl is, she. I think she's not started it yet, or she tried to start it but was too tired. My friend who is 100 pages in is enjoying it so far. So that bodes well. Um, I'm not going to be in Feybound Jail, which is I think what we're going to call it for when a book is so bad we all like want to DNF it. Um, I think this book is going to be maybe not a hit, but I think everyone's going to like at least enjoy and appreciate it. I don't think any of them are gonna give it less than a three stars. I don't wanna like jinx myself, but like, I, I feel like I've done okay. Like, it's a good book, there's nothing to dislike. I, I can't see any personal reasons why they might not like it, unless they just really don't like mystery stuff, which I can't help that. So, <laughs> so I think I've done okay. Um, so yeah, my, my plans for the rest of the evening, like it's like, it's nine o'clock almost, and I have to be up at like four in the fucking morning to get the bus to work because my commute is like an hour and a bit and ugh, god I hate god, I do not dream of labour <laughs> I wish I could just like read all day but I'm going to make some pasta get a shower um, and I feel like I need to start another book tonight while I'm like I don't know like in a good reading zone part of me like I, I keep thinking like I really want to do another round of like the like TBR jar hell but I feel like that needs to be its own video and I don't want to start it in this video and there's another RNG type um, like reading vlog that I want to do but I don't feel like it's time to start that yet that's gonna open up some massive commitments for me but I will make that its own video as well I'm looking at my stack mainly because I can't get to half of my bookshelf behind the stack so what's in my stack I know what I should read I have removed the dust jacket to save me some time. I know this looks like I'm <laughs> trying to trick you. Um, it is Every Star A Song by Jay Posey. This is the sequel to Every Sky A Grave, which I read in November. I did quite enjoy the first one, and I only have to read this much more to know how like the whole series ends. Um, I do like a duology. <laughs> it's, it's so quick. It's so easy. So I think this is going to be my next read, um, and I'm excited to get to it. I remember it being... Once I managed to get into the first book, it went fairly quick as a reading, um, but I also feel like it's not... I feel like this book maybe, or at least the first book, lent itself well to being able to like stop and start, and given that I'm probably not going to have any time to eat or sleep or do anything all next week, um, if I maybe get like five to ten minutes to just like read one chapter at a time, I feel like this is the kind of book where I can maybe do that. I wouldn't want to start like a new like epic high fantasy or something. I feel like this is the level of thing that I can dip in and out of and not lose interest or lose momentum um, or forget what I've read. So I think this is going to be my next read and hopefully it's going to get me through the next um, rough week. I'll probably still be reading this. I'll, I'll probably be like like 50 pages in by next weekend. So that's my plan. And also there is a... <laughs> I thought it was a fly. There is a wasp in my house. <laughs> I'm not scared of wasps. They don't actually bother me. Um, I've been stung like on the face as well, but like wasps don't bother me. I'm just like, it's a wasp. It's, I'm, I'm in England. They're like this big, like it's fine. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I got it on camera at any point, but like while I was filming like some little time lapses for like the reading vlog, I just, I kept hearing what I thought was a fly buzzing about. Um, and it is a wasp and it is hiding in the lampshade of the light on my landing. So I can't actually get to it, um, but when I can, my other side quest for the evening is to get rid of this fucking wasp. Um, I'm going to try and trap it in a cup and put it outside where it belongs. Yay, that's my plan for the evening. Um, I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done today, um, and I haven't edited any videos in a really long time either. <laughs> Again, because I've been so busy. So I feel like I probably need to do that, but I also 
don't really want to be awake too late. I feel like if I'm getting eight hours of sleep, I should have been in bed an hour ago. It is what it is. <laughs> I suppose the only good thing is that if I'm in the office by myself, it's a Monday, like who, who's in the office on a Monday? Other than me because I have a board meeting, um, for which I will be bored. I get into the office at like 7 and it's 7am on a Monday morning and I might be able to like update some spreadsheets and things and like while I'm doing that, maybe I could listen to my audiobook on human skin. That would be good. <laughs> I don't know, I, I feel like I'm making decent progress. So I'm gonna go try and evict this wasp and then make myself some congratulatory pasta as a reward. Um, and then figure out what the hell I'm doing for the rest of the evening and then hopefully, hopefully go to sleep <laughs> so that I can get up and go to my stupid job. Okay. And I realised I didn't actually film like any sort of actual end <laughs> to this vlog. I am, I've just realised I'm really stupid and I've forgotten to bring the book downstairs which is great but um, I can't bother to go get it. So <laughs> I am several chapters into Every Star A Song and it feels a little bit slow getting back into it but honestly I am still enjoying the story. I do think I am going to enjoy the book. I have not finished it yet. Um, I have not read anything in like... I'm just not having a great reading time. I'm not having a great anything time. <laughs> My brain doesn't behave in April. It, I tend to do like nothing in April. So like I'm ending this vlog now because if we wait until I finish the book it could be next month. So <laughs> but yeah I, I am really enjoying where the sequel is going so far. I think it's interesting, I think the premise is interesting. There is a new character who, we don't know very much about them yet, but I really like their specific character archetype, so I am enjoying that. Um, I'm liking their inclusion, like the new characters, um, so that's fun. I kind of can't really say much more about it than that, um, even just describing like the basic premise of the book would be spoilers for like the first book and how that ends, so I'm not going to do that. I have somehow managed to make myself like leave the house and do a few like fun things. You will have seen that I went to see Dragon Force, which so much fun. Um, I really really liked the opening band, Infected Rain. They are fantastic. I'll be honest, I cannot remember who headlined. <laughs> I spent way too much money 
on this. Like, I, I thought it would be like a like a fleecy material. I thought I could wear this as like pajamas. It's very thin, but like it's got like early nineties like dark um like I don't know like fantasy dungeon games. Um, it's got swords on the arms. It's got like a dragon on the front. It's got the tour dates on the back. I had to have it at this point because I have just gotten an Amazon package as well. While I'm here, I will give you guys a quick um, book unboxing. Amazon, as always, like I wish I didn't have to buy this year at Amazon, but I, it's an indie book, so like I don't think I can get it anywhere else. <laughs> I will see if they will replace my copy with a non-damaged. I just I. It's a hardback and it cost me like £30 so I want it undamaged. But you'll see why I bought this. Um, it is Mushroom Blues by Adrian M. Gibson. I will put this in my next haul. Um, but like, first of all, the cover. It's like, it's blue and it's mushrooms. And you know me, I love mushrooms. And because I recently enjoyed some like fantasy mystery, um, this kind of, you know, I feel like it could be good. I think it's kind of like a cyberpunk mushroom maybe like noir vibes I'm, I'm not sure what to expect um but it's cool it has mushrooms in it i sent a quick email to the author to ask like about when it was getting published and stuff um and they seemed really cool and chill so i wanted to have this um it's oh my god it's actually a printed hardback which now makes me even more mad that they've like they've crushed the spine but like oh my god this book has a, okay and it's definitely going in my next haul um but when I bought it, this had like a one to two month shipping time. I don't know if that's why it's damaged. I don't know. Maybe, the, I don't know. I'm guessing this came back in stock from somebody that already returned it and maybe they just resent it out or maybe it just got severely damaged in transit. But I feel like after having read The Tainted Cup, which is, again, that's like high fantasy mushrooms and then like a mystery. And this seems more like, I'm not sure if it's fantasy or sci-fi or some sort of blend, cyberpunky, futuristic but also mushrooms and mystery. I feel like if you just give me some sort of like fantasy and mushrooms and mystery, I'll probably enjoy it, so. And then while I am hauling things, um, I might as well say, I, cause I know I went to the goth market again in this video and they had like the, the person that sells the candles was not there, <laughs> but I ended up there at a vintage market kind of randomly. And guess what? They had the fucking candles. So I got myself like a, a delightful little silvery cup thing that smells like black cherry and it smells so good. And this tiny little thing! This bitch has little faces and little feet. I have no idea what this is. I'm guessing like... It looks weird for a trinket dish so I'd assume it's some sort of like incense burner or like oil burner or something. I have no clue. But it it, it just looks like a weird little squat cauldron um, and I had to have it. It was like £3 so candles for me. And I realise this is a lot of stuff but <laughs> I went to a disastrous con. Do not go to this convention. Um, but I went to the Leeds anime festival but in the dealer hall if you know me you know i fucking love a pigeon look at this little guy look this is so cute this was 12 pounds it was so overpriced but it supports small artists and also it is a pigeon um <laughs> and i love him pretty much to sum up this vlog my reading plans are going to be that i'm going to somehow eventually <laughs> Like, just at a snail's pace. Just like fucking over broken glass army crawl my way through um, Every Star A Song. And like, it's not a bad book at all. I'm just like, I, I, I can't function. I cannot function. <laughs> so I'm gonna try my best to like get through this book. I do think the book lends itself pretty well to being able to like dip in and out of it. I think I picked the right book. And every time I do pick it up, it is interesting. It's just that like, I can't focus. So um, at some point I will finish it. And then I, we have picked the next Goth Girl Book Club book. It's like my friend's favourite new book and like to the point where she's trying to befriend the author. So like I'm going to make a whole vlog of reading that. So at some point either like, at, at some point before my next Goth Girl Book Club, which I don't know when that is, I need to read this book. So I need to get a move on. I don't know how many books I'm going to be able to read between now and like May. But come May I do have a nice little like themed reading vlog idea for like the whole month so it's gonna be one of those rare circumstances where like I have a monthly TBR and like I have a plan going in um and you know it's some new releases and also some like backdated books that I'm really excited for so I'm excited for that TBR so like I'm trying to like keep a good mentality about it and get excited about future videos and like future books and be like motivated to read <laughs> it's just so hard to be motivated to do anything as it is I leave you trying to uh exist in the best way that I can. It's not always great. I'm not always great at it, but 
I'm trying. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I... I think because of the weird order my videos have come out, like, I, I have not wanted to edit or film, like, all month. So I think the last thing that I posted, I think I did ask for a mushroom emoji there, but like, um, I read a mushroomy book and I've got, I see mushrooms here. So <laughs> once again, I'm asking you to leave me a mushroom emoji. I think as someone who is discovering that I like, um, again, not just mushrooms, but, um, I think I am, I am really finding that I really like, um, high fantasy, or just like, I suppose like fantasy in general, but specifically high fantasy, when it is crossed with um, like the mystery genre. I think I am just finding out that this is something that I like. So in the spirit of sharing, whether it's like popular or like really niche, um, what's your guys favorite like genre crossover? Like I know for a lot of people that fantasy and romance is like a big crossover like favorite at the moment for a lot of people, but for me it's turning out to be fantasy mystery. So do any of you have any like I don't know, particular favourites, like, whether it's, like, really niche and specific or not. Like, I'm interested to know what other genre combos might be a good mix. Whether it's fantasy or not, I'm just kind of... It's like when you get, like, two foods that go together really well, even if you don't expect it. I'm interested to know if there's any other good genre mashups that you guys are a fan of. So, with that, I am going to sign off this video. I am going to go rot away in my little goblin nest. <laughs> but hopefully you guys are reading something good. And maybe I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Thank you.